telltale signs that something is wrong. Two suicides, a murder, a string of number one hits. The life of Tim Friedman is as extraordinary as the songs he penned for his band, The Whitlams. Tonight, for the first time, he reveals their darkest secrets, the truth behind their greatest tracks. Letter to you on a cassette, cause we don't write anymore. Once heard, Tim Friedman's songs are hard to forget. No Pain, betrayal and loss. No one does melancholy like the Maverick Muso. And I wish I wish I knew the right words. Blow up the pokies and drag them away. When you look back over the years, it's really like reading a sad story. Yeah, when fondness makes the heart grow. Together with his band, The Whitlams, Tim has become one of this country's greatest musical success stories. His independent record, Eternal Nightcap, came from nowhere in 1997 to sell almost 200,000 copies. Of course, the sad fact is that from the three of us that started the band in 92, I'm the only one that's alive. But from the outset, Tim's success has been shadowed by death and personal tragedy. His song, Blow Up the Pokies, is a tribute to his former bandmate, Steve Plunder. When Stevie died in uh, January 96, um, that was the lowest point the band was in. Six months later, I put another band together and then tried to record an album called Eternal Nightcap over the year. And then three months after that, we had a platinum record and we were Group of the Year at the Arias. It was this song, No Aphrodisiac, that broke the band to a wider audience. The first line is a letter to you on a cassette. Uh, I was very late at night, I had a girlfriend in Melbourne, I got back to Sydney and I wrote her a little um, song on a cassette and I sent it to her. No aphrodisiac like loneliness. Rock star Tim Friedman was one of the last people to see Sydney journalist Jennifer Smith alive. In 1998, another dark chapter. The murder of friend and fan Jennifer Smith in the same street Tim lived. Speculation arose he was somehow involved. Jennifer was a girl that I'd known at university, but, um, and she died at the end of my street, but, you know, me and the police knew that I had no motive or opportunity, and, you know, I don't sit at the end, stand at the end of my street at 6 a.m bag snatching women and knocking them down, you know. Did you feel the press were after you? The tabloids wanted me to be connected with this murder because it was a salacious story, but, you know, not for a moment did I think I was ever going to be dragged into it. There's no aphrodisiac like Newtown. Truth, beauty and the Turkish kebab. When the ABC's chaser team sent him up in one of their skits, Tim was a little suspicious of their motives. The thing is, with those fellows, though, you never know which one of them's writing it. And uh, so they can sort of uh, write stuff anonymously, in a way. And when I found out by chance which fellow had written it, I also humorously wrote a little article asking whether the fact that we'd uh, shared at different times the same girlfriend might have had something to do with the fact that they were having a little go at me. Currently promoting a Best Of compilation, it's a reflective time for Tim. The pain, it's all a part of his journey. Without the sadness, there are no songs. You know, I just try and write little half-act plays from my life and um, if there's no story, there's no song for me. And Best of the Whitlams is in stores this weekend. Sally Obermeter reporting. Up next, TV vet Dr Harry Cooper's battle to stay alive.